Hey everybody, this is Pastor Chris. I'm coming to you live from Lexington Park Baptist Church and this is PC Studios and it is May the 12th, 2022. How in the world are you doing today? I hope you're blessed, highly favored. Hey, good to see you out there. Uh, Pam, you signed in. I got Keith out there. I got Michelle. I got five others out there online. Hey, I got from Ohio to Maryland to, to other locations. Welcome to the program today. Listen, if you are with us live, you need to be at uh, facebook.com slash LP, uh, Facebook dot, facebook.com slash Pastor Chris McCombs. You can also be on our Lexington Park channels on YouTube or Facebook and, and also Chris McCombs channels on, on, you, on YouTube uh, and we're on Twitch. Whatever program you're watching, whether live or later on or whatever it might be, thank you for being in the program. Thank you for tuning in on this Thursday. Kind of a little dreary out here in Maryland. I hope it's sunny up in other places of Ohio and Kentucky out there. Uh, watching. So hey everybody, um, I hope you're doing good again today. Like I said, um, been a good day. Had a had a Christian concert. My wife, uh, many of you know, she teaches music at a, at a, for a school group and uh, teaches piano lessons too, but um, she did a program today. Just excellent, excellent job. I uh, just feel myself. Got to bless my, my office staff with lunch and now I'm back in here and I get to be blessed by spending some time with you. So I, I'm just grateful. Blessed for God's provisions. Blessed Blessed to be alive, blessed to be here, Ble uh, just just a true honor. Anyway, so today we're going to delve into some complex issues. We're really going to look at a cultural ideology and a biblical ideology. Biblical ideology, which is a God ideology. So, listen, our ideology, you, you, you've heard, I call it ideology because it's an idea. Ideology, I don't, you know, I don't really know what the proper thing, how to say it, but I've heard it both ways. I say ideology. So, it's a philosophy of life. It's a worldview. And we all have them. <clears throat> they structure the things we believe, how we view life, how we view the world, how we view moral issues or ethics. These are all part of ideology. They also will persuade our politics, whether you're going to be a Democrat or Republican or independent. Uh, you know, and I don't really know how somebody could really be independent. I don't like all the Republican stuff. The Democrats have just lost their minds. I'm just being honest. It's just if you're a Democrat out there and you claim to be a Christian, you've got some serious ideology issues to work out. And there's stuff with the Republican Party and, and independence, how somebody can be neutral on some of these moral issues, abortion, gender, marriage. I mean... Uh, uh, drugs on the border, you name it. Uh, it it uh, wars, wars in Ukraine and uh, it just, it, inflation. It, it, there's just so many complex things. What, what I'm getting at is I'm not trying to persuade anybody to be any, anything other than this. Have a biblical ideology and let your biblical ideology impact your education, impact how you view the world, impact your, your choice in church, impact... Um, how you see life, impact your marriage, impact your view on gender, social issues, justice issues, discrimination issues, you name it, your politics, your ideology should impact all that. So if you're a Christian, you should want, above all else, Christ, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, to be influential in your life, guiding your ideology. So Sunday, Mother's Day, I didn't speak in those terms about us bringing that whole package together and saying, listen, mamas don't let your babies grow up to be woke. And one of the scripture verses, Proverbs 22, 6, raise up a child in the ways they should go. So when they get older, right, they, they, won't, they won't part from it. They'll return to that path. They'll know that path of righteousness. Um, that is still true wisdom. Biblical wisdom it is that. So we, we want to have that. So let's talk about these two different ideology or worldviews that come clashing together. Listen, we said yesterday, we, we read this, right? Right here in John 15, 19. If you are of the world, the world would love you as its own. So whenever we side with the world, the world's going to love us. When we don't, they're going to hate us. Because it says right here, but the world hates you. And why does it hate you? Jesus goes on to say, because it hates me. So if you're going to be my disciple, Jesus is basically claiming, uh, the ways of the world are not my ways. And eventually, at some point, those things are going to come clashing together. And when they do, oh, look out. When they do, the world will hate you if you do not embrace the world's why ways. If you embrace the world, they're going to love you. But you're not of the world. You're in it, but you're not of it anymore. You are the light of the world. You're not in the darkness of the world anymore. We talked about that yesterday a little bit. So it was briefly covered in the sermon, too. 
So today, nitty gritty, Proverbs 22, 6, we raise up our kids in the ways of the world, of, of, of the word, the Lord, not the world. We want to take that L out. We want to teach our children truly how to be enlightened and illuminated by the word of God, and that is the awakening they have, not the woke, the evoke of woke by woke folk in our culture. I like that. You like all that? That kind of rhymed. I should, should write a song, right? I can make a country song off that. Um, so mothers, we talked about this. Listen, we are mothers, fathers, educators, pastors. We are responsible for teaching children, other adults. I, I confess, every time I preach, I, every time I preach, when you really think about it, I'm, I'm trying to influence you. These teachings, I'm trying to influence you. These teachings are our method, if you will. I, I, I confess, I, I, I admit this. There is, there is an indoctrination taking place. Now, you don't have to agree, right? Um, you could disagree, but I don't think we can disagree on this. I'm going to teach you this. I'm going to teach you the word. Now, if you want to disagree with God and have a different ideology, that's between you and him. That's really not my problem. I mean, I have a problem with you if you do that. But that's not really ultimately my problem. That's your problem, and that's your issue with God. You don't have an issue with me. Sadly, the woke culture of our society has an issue with you or me if we don't agree with them. It's just that way. You will drink the Kool-Aid. You will follow their ways. You will not just say, I tolerate you, or you have the right to that. No, they will mandate you, not, you accept their views you normalize their views, you agree with their views, and if you don't, you're a bigot, you're a hater, you're a discriminator, and that, the list goes on. Um, even criminal, right? So we're seeing the woke evoked right now in the culture as they're boycotting Supreme Court justices because uh, potentially Roe v. Wade might be overturned, which right on puts it on the state, more pressure on us locally, but right on. That's the stopping of the Holocaust. It's a, it's a, it's a great... It won't end the battle on abortion, but it is a huge victory if that happens for life. Oh, wow. You know, you've got people, you've got the mayor of Chicago coming out and saying, hey, uh, LGBTQ people, take up arms. What in the world does that mean? Take up arms are coming after us, meaning the Supreme Court. Take up arms? How can, how can she say that? How can you get away with that? If that was a conservative or a Christian pastor saying that, oh my gosh. So they can get away with a lot of things and say a lot of things that 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 woke ideology, that that liberal, progressive, ungodly, unrighteous, evil, wicked often ideology. Now, you may disagree. I don't know how you can. I, indisputable. Those views are against God's views. So let's talk about a couple of those today. Connect some dots here. So listen, Genesis 127, we are made in the image of God. Mothers, fathers, pastors, we are to teach our children the imago day. Every human life has value. So when it comes to abortion, we teach life. Now, that doesn't mean there's never like, you, you know, there's also, there's hierarchy of order of things. For example, if a mother's dying and the child cannot um, is not viable, but they save the mother's life, and in the process, the child is taken but can't survive. That's not an abortion. That's that's called life-saving procedures for a mother. So medical, these medical, where you get that one percent of all abortions, the medical abortion, that should not be on the slate of an issue for anyone. Uh, incest and rape, uh, the, those I'm not even going to touch. That's controversial. It's conflicted. I, I do have a position on that, but we're really dealing with 98 to 99% of all abortions that are really having to deal with pregnancy. Now, we can't control how someone gets put in that position, but mothers, we can say, look, we honor life. Parents, fathers, Christians, we stand for life, period, unashamedly. God is the author of life, created us in his image. What that also plays into, not only Psalm 139, you know, we're fearfully, wonderfully made, we're knitted together, but it also plays into race. If we're made in the image of God, and if we really go back to Adam and Eve, and that's when God created us, and I use the word if for those that might be skeptical, it's true for me. So there's no doubt in my mind, if Jesus later in the gospel says, in the beginning, did not God said, 
that he created us male and female. In the beginning, did God not say, a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife? Yes, Jesus did say those things. Jesus is verifying the first 12 chapters of Genesis as truth. So what we have here is then race is really, we're one race, the human race. We don't get taught that. We should. Yes, there's different ethnicities. Yes, there's different cultural perspectives. There's different characteristics to us. You know, Japanese have the slanted eyes. You know, in the Orient, that you know, there's a, there's a, 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 a different color skin. It's not white. You got... You know, obviously in Africa, you got darker colored skin. Obviously in different regions, you have white colored skin. You know, in, you know, in, in Mexico, you have the Hispanic, you know, Mediter and then you get to Mediterranean, you get into Israel, you got olive drab. So we have different tones of skin, but we're the same. We're one human race made in the image of God. His diversity is beautiful. The diversity of God in his creation is beauty. We need to teach our children Red, yellow, black, and white, they are precious in his sight. One race, one human race. Life is God-given, and we need to honor that. Our con Actually, our declaration says that our Constitution, I believe, supports that. So Roe v. Wade was wrong. Racism is wrong. We need to uh, oppose all forms of racism. We need to make sure that no matter what color skin, that we are judged by the content of our character, and that Martin Luther King Jr. said that, and we need to make sure that we honor with human dignity all human life all human beings that are alive. So that settles that. I hope, mothers, you can take that, use that. Marriage. Listen, marriage is between a man and his wife, a woman. Marriage has always been intended to be that way. Now, we've messed it up from the very beginning, but in Genesis 2, 24, a man shall leave his husband, you know, his a husband, right, a son, shall leave his mother and father, become that husband, cleave to his wife, and the two flesh become one. From the very beginning, Jesus said, "In you've heard from the beginning. He knew what he was saying. I'm saying it to you now. The same words of Jesus. In the beginning, you've heard this said. It is true. It is still true 2,000 years after Jesus. It was true when Jesus said it. It was true when God spoke all things into existence and he created Adam and Eve and the first marriage happened in the Garden of Eden. It is true today. That God's definition of marriage is one man and one woman for life, Period. We should be unashamed of that. Do we mess it up? Yeah. Is there a divorce? Yes. Is that a sin? Yes. Can it be forgiven? Yes. We need to stop holding that over people. Is polygamy a sin? Yes. Can it be forgiven? Yes. You'd have to repent. You got some serious issues there, right? There's, and we had that in the Bible. The Bible doesn't white, whitewash anything, right? That is right out there for us to see. That was not that was not God's intention of family. So we've got that. Mothers, we don't redefine womanhood or manhood. We don't do that. God defined manhood and womanhood for us. He created us male and female, period. There's a difference biologically, emotionally. There's so many differences between us intellectually. But listen, that doesn't mean man. Listen, girls, girls are smart. There's more women in college in America than men. Don't know why that is, but women are smart. We want men, women to get educated. We want men to be educated. We want men to be the leaders of their homes. We want men to be masculine. We want women to be feminine. We want to have appropriate modesty in how we dress and how we relate to each other. We want purity. There's so many things that feed into this relationship, but, but, but biologically, we're male, female. We should not see males coming out and saying, I'm a female, I want to compete against females. NCAA has lost their flipping minds, right? Uh, these gender bathrooms, people have lost their minds. So people have drank this woke Kool-Aid and they're not biblical anymore. Their ideology is gone. So listen, if you're having trouble with what I'm saying, you're not being biblical because what I've been saying is biblical. So when you look at all these things, and I want you to see what culture does, what culture does. There's a Fitbit commercial that I wa that unfortunately I watch. You can't get rid of it. I watch, um, I watch shows on Roku, uh, older ones, but they throw commercials in there and there's one on Fitbit. And it's got this guy playing this piano and he's doing this stuff and he's got, you know, so... It's a pretty cool song, and he's just, he's just grooving in his living room. Now, he's not doing anything wrong, necessarily. And it has this variety of people wearing Fitbits. One is a cross-dressing man on a, on a, on a uh, uh, dancing pole in the middle of his living room. It's just kind of like, what? And then another one's uh, two homosexual lesbians kissing on a beach. Uh, and then the other people are all normal people. Somebody trying to lose weight, somebody doing this, somebody doing activities, lifting weights, whatever. Um, 
what does that have to do with Fibbit? What they're doing is trying to indoctrinate you. Why does Marvel, in the end, at the end of uh, the Eternals, have a gay scene with two gay people singing? Because they're trying to indoctrinate you. You know, why does every... Think about it. You start watching shows. I have this thought. You get into a, a new series and they put a gay person. They make, uh, they did something with Supergirl on this. They, they, now, they've, now they've got a gay Superman. They're intentionally doing these things. Why? They want to indoctrinate our children. Why is Disney doing it? I'm telling you, why is Disney no longer saying, ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls, you know, blah, 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 welcome to Disney. Why are they doing that? Because they want to indoctrinate us. They want young minds... And they want our division, they want division in our society, and they don't want us to follow this. You know, that really comes down to, to the truth, right? Um, a secular world, a secular ideology does not like what we do. They don't want to have what we do. And Jesus said it, I'm going to go back and we're going to end on this. John 15, 19, if you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. Oh, because you are not of the world, though, and I have chosen you out of it, the world hates you. Because God has chosen us, because we are no longer of the world, the world hates us. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, men and women, I can say that with authenticity and authority, unashamedly. The world doesn't like you. The world doesn't like what you believe. The world doesn't like what Jesus teaches and so, moms, you're in a tough position. That's what I was saying Sunday morning. Mamas, don't let your boys, babies, girls grow up not to be cowboys or cowgirls, but to be woke. If they are, they're going to believe things that are against the Bible. So what do we have to do? We have to teach the Word of God. Jesus says he's called us out there in John chapter 15. He's called us not to be of the world. Uh, yes, to be in it. But because we're not of it, the world's going to hate us. So make sure you are not teaching a worldly ideology, but you are teaching a biblical ideology. And then Proverbs 22 comes true. Raise up a child in the ways that he or she should go, and when they grow old, they will not part from it. I pray we have great success in that. Thanks for listening. I hope this helped you. I hope this gives you some, some things to think about. If it challenges you and, and you don't understand, and you really want to understand, come, come, and we'll search the scriptures together. Um, if you've totally drank the Kool-Aid and you're just mad at me, that's between you and the Lord. And if you're out there and you're like, this is it. This is what I, th I need this. I need to understand this. I, I, I'm struggling with this. I'm living in the midst of this world. I feel the hatred. What do I do, Pastor? You just keep doing what you're doing then. You keep doing what's right. You love on people. You listen, you, you love on sinners, you, you know, but, but you, you, you hate the sin, but you love the sinner. You, 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 you make sure that you're living a good life, that you're living a godly life, that you're living by the Bible. And you do those things and you teach those things to your children unashamedly. You know, don't let them listen to the junk on the radio. Don't let them watch the stuff on the radio. They don't need a telephone to get in trouble and do pornography and all that kind of stuff. Protect your kids from the world. That's our job, parents. Hey, that's all I've got for you. Happy Mother's Day. I know that one's, that's a tough one, what we talked about today, but we got to talk about those tough issues uh, this week coming up. A few things. Don't forget, Saturday, we have our safety conference, our safety conference, sex abuse prevention and awareness, and then we're going to have lunch, and then we're going to have uh, special training. Thanks to the Sheriff's Department, EMS Department in Lexington Park, we're going to have training on CPR, on tourniquet, on, on chest pressure, uh, fill dressings, um, and, 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 and other safety things. We're also going to have nursery training. You want to be here. Hope to see you there. And then Sunday, we're going to start a new sermon series called Return to Righteousness on First and Second Thessalonians. You don't want to miss it. We're going to be in it for the rest of the year. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a lot of information, but it's about Jesus' return and our responsibility to live righteously. So I hope you'll, you'll be a part of that. Uh, don't forget, you got to sign up, ladies, for the 21st for the, for the brunch at 11. And gentlemen, we have the 21st. We're pretty much already registered, but if you've not signed up, you've got to let me know immediately about going to the men's retreat on Saturday the 21st as well. Hey, man, God bless you all. Have a great weekend. We will see you Sunday at 10 a.m. Don't forget, we're also going down to Park Hall True Holiness at 3 p.m. on Sunday to preach down at Bishop Spence's church. Looking forward to spending time with them and spending time with you. You have a great day. Remember these two realities. God loves you, and so do I. You take care. Have a good day.